Hello everyone. Uh, so today we talk about uh, briefly the risk scoring for gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. You know that uh, once we make a diagnosis of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, we have to stage the patients. We have to give them a risk uh, scoring or a prognostic scoring. And then after we give them a prognostic uh, scoring and a risk scoring, um, we have to uh, then refer uh, these patients to a cancer disease hospital or to any other place where um, uh, these patients usually are taken to. So I'm presenting this to uh, show you the easy way of uh, remembering the risk scoring and the parameters that are associated with it so that it's um, it's easy for those exams when you're asked what are the parameters that are part of the uh, prognostic scoring for a gestational trophoblastic uh, neoplasia patient. So let's um, get into it. So this is the World Health Organization and uh, Federation of Obstetricians and Gynecologists are prognostic uh, scoring for gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. So we see there are eight uh, parameters that we have to remember and I've just rearranged them uh, for your exam purposes to, and also for your clinical purposes because you need uh, to um, Think about this scoring when you are getting a history from a patient who has gestational trophoblastic neoplasia to help you uh, get all the information and also to help you uh, decide what their prognostic scoring is and therefore also help you plan uh, their care and also help you to cancel the patient. So this is my rearrangement of the... World Health Organization FIGO prognostic scoring uh, to make it easy um, for all of us to remember uh, the eight parameters that that are there. And like we've already said, help us take a proper history, uh, make us get all the information and so on. So uh, the first uh, thing that is there on the rearrangement is the origin. Then we have your A, then we have your B, then we have your C, then we have your D, then we have your metastasis uh, parameters at the bottom. So your first thing is the origin. Where did this um, tumor come from? Did it come from a mole? Uh, had, uh, is it a partial mole? Is it a complete mole? Did it come from an ectopic pregnancy? Did it arise from a miscarriage? Did it arise from a term pregnancy? I think I already shared how my last um, gestational trophoblastic neoplasia patient delivered a 3.5 kg baby. And then four months later, she came with um, vaginal bleeding. We made the diagnosis of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. And... Um, uh, of course, she was referred to the um, uh, cancer disease hospital. That's the first thing. So where did this tumor come from? What is its origin? The second parameter is A, which is age. So is she less than 40? Is she greater than 40? So if she's uh, more than 40, you give a 1. If she's less than 40, you give a 0. Then you have your B, which is the serum uh, beta HCG levels. Uh, if it's 1,000, it's clear. It's uh, less and less. It's a zero. Anything between 1,000 and um, 10,000 gets a one. Anything between 10,000 and 100,000 gets a two. Anything above uh, 100,000 gets a four. Just remember that uh, on the scoring, we only have a zero, one, two, and four. There's no three in between. That's important to remember for the... Um, uh, gestational trophoblastic uh, neoplasia uh, prognostic scoring. Then um, the next parameter is the uh, calendar. Remember that um, for all our gestational trophoblastic neoplasia patients, we have a calendar. We have um, how often they should do their serum beta HCG. We have um, how long they should be on contraception. We have how long they should be on chemo. Um, we have a calendar on when they should attempt a pregnancy. So there's this calendar that the patient is keeping. So that will help us remember that we are looking at the calendar. So in this case, we are looking at uh, from the origin, from the time this uh, the pregnancy that caused um, 
uh, this gestational trophoblastic neoplasia, how much time has passed to the point at which we are trying to treat this patient. So um, in the example I was giving, uh, that patient I had a few months ago, they were pregnant four months ago, and now uh, they've come uh, with vaginal bleeding. We make a diagnosis of gestational trophoblastic neoplasia. So there would be somewhere between four and six months so they've gotten a score of one because it's more than four months, but less than six months from the time they delivered in our labor ward. And then they've come to uh, for this vaginal bleeding and we've made this diagnosis. Then we have to look at the drugs. Have they been on more than one drug to treat this gestational trophoblastic neoplasia before? Or have they been on more than one drug? So if they've been on one drug, they get a two. If they've been on more than one drug before, they get a four. Then we are done with the first five. We are remaining with the last three, which are just metastasis. So it's the size of metastasis, the site of metastasis, and the number of metastasis. So we know about the size, that the dimensions of the uterus, a normal uterus is around three by five by eight. So if a patient has three metastases, or is it uh, three centimeters size of the tumor in the uterus, we give them a score of zero. If the tumor in the uterus is between three and five centimeters, we give them a um, one. If the tumor is more than five um, uh, centimeters, which is like it's exceeding one of the dimensions of the uterus, that's greater than five, we give them a two. Then um, we have to look at the site. Um, you have to look at the lungs, get zero because that's the commonest site. Uh, the spleen and kidney, you give a one. Any metastasis to the gastrointestinal system, you give a two. Uh, metastasis to the brain and liver get a score of four. Um, then lastly, how many metastases are actually there on a physical count? So if it's none, you give zero. If it's one to four, you give one. If it's five to eight uh, individual metastatic um um, points you give a two if it's more than eight we give um, a score of four so we add up all these if a patient ends up with a total score of less than seven they are low risk if they end up with a score of seven and above they are high risk. If they end up with a score of above 12, they are ultra high risk. So ultra high risk patients are kind of tricky because um, any patient who has a brain metastasis and liver metastasis is classified as um, ultra high risk. Any patient with metabolic disturbances from the metastasis uh, is uh, classified as uh, ultra high risk. Um, any patient who has had life-threatening severe hemorrhage is classified as uh, ultra high risk and any patients with a score um, with a total score of above 12 is also classified as ultra high risk ultra high risk patient uh, classification has come in because um, these patients have a high risk of um, mortality so they've kind of been given this new uh, class called ultra high um, risk And lastly, um, we just have to remember that um, uh, we have to have a stagy and a prognostic scoring for every gestational trophoblastic neoplasia patient. So all patients who have a tumor that is confined to the uterus are stage, that stage one disease. Uh, those patients who have... Um, uh, a tumor in the uterus that has spread to the vagina or to other genital structures are classified as um, um, stage two uh, disease. Uh, stage three disease is um, spread to the lungs, uh, even if there's no um, spread to other genital structures, but they spread to the lungs. That's stage three, and stage four uh, spread to other parts. Of the of the body, so that uh, that's how um, gestational trophoblastic uh, neoplasia is staged. So um, once you stage, you have to uh, put um, your numbers. Uh, we can see in the bullet where the stage four, 
but the prognostic scoring is nine. This is just an example. So this patient is high risk, but they are stage four disease. So they have um, disease that has spread beyond uh, the genital tract um, and uh, to other sites other than the lungs, but they also have um, a high risk when we put the things together. The last point is that um, Patients who have uh, placentocyte trophoblastic tumor, epithelial trophoblastic tumor, we don't usually do um, a prognostic scoring. We just do a staging. I think the reason is that um, normally these patients um, don't respond to chemo. And part of the reason we do a prognostic scoring is to decide what type of chemo the patients will be on. So patients who are below the score of uh, seven, the low risk patients usually are on are treated with one drug, methotrexate. Patients who are who end up with a score of seven and above get five drugs. That's your etoposide, your methotrexate, your actinomycin D, your cyclophosphamide and oncovin. So they get all those five drugs. So patients with uh, placentocyte trophoblastic tumor and epithelial trophoblastic tumor um, are not going to go on these drugs. Usually they end up with hysterectomy and maybe that's the reason that um, they don't get a prognostic um, scoring. So that is about um, uh, the additional points. So that was all uh, for today. Thank you so much for listening and we will see you um, next time.